It's very gratifying to receive this award and to be associated in any way with Albert Einstein. I can't think of anyone else whose name has become shorthand for really smart. There's no educational toy company called Baby Copernicus. <laughs> but what made Einstein so loved was not just his incredible brilliance. It was the way he combined his great intellect with a strong moral sensibility. He didn't believe in science only for its own sake. He was very aware of the human context of his work. In 1931, during his second tour of the United States, Einstein gave a speech to the student body at Cal Caltech about the intersection of science and morality. And he said, if you want your life's work to be useful to mankind, it is not enough that you understand applied science as such. Concern for man himself must always be the chief objective of all technical effort. He finished with an, this additional thought. Never forget this when you are pondering over your diagrams and equations. I'm optimistic about what innovation can do for us because I look back and see what it's already done. When people look around the world today, they see disease, they see poverty, they see ignorance. It is not hard to understand why. There is a great deal of suffering. There is too little peace. Modern communications, including the internet, makes it easier to see the misery that still exists around us. But I'm convinced that as good as their intentions are, observers who take this negative view have it backwards. The fact is, any way you look at it, in, in terms of the millennia, centuries, or decades, the world is getting better, healthier, wealthier, more educated, more peaceful. Innovation has been the driving force behind two big changes. First, it has brought the needs of the poor to our attention. The communications technology has shrunk the world. Computers connect us in a way that brings us closer together every day. We can now email, text message, video conference, and communicate with people all over the world in an instant. The old saying that we're all in this together has never seemed so real. People have always believed in the bonds of mutual responsibility. That's just human nature to help others. Innovations only matter when they reach the people who need them most. I think that's what Albert Einstein was saying to those students at Caltech 75 years ago. We must make sure that innovation is pointed in the right direction. And to do that, we need to get the very best people working on the most important problems. And that's not something that happens automatically. Let's take the example of malaria, which is one of the world's worst disease. Disease is killing over a million young children every year. The world spends substantially more on curing baldness than on curing malaria. That's a market failure. Nobody really needs hair tonic, but enough people are both willing and able to pay for it, so companies develop and sell it. Meanwhile, the hundreds of millions of poor people who need the life-saving malaria treatments can't afford it, and so the market does not speak on their behalf. So the treatments never get made. I'm certain we all agree that malaria should be far ahead of baldness on the world's list of priorities. There's nothing wrong with curing baldness, but how can we make, take the same kind of intelligence and energy that attacks those problems and focus it not only on malaria, but also hunger and the other big diseases of the poor? How can we guarantee that, as Einstein hoped, the results of our scientific thinking may be a blessing to mankind. Philanthropy has a critical role to play in making this happen. That's why my wife, Melinda, and I created our foundation eight years ago, and that's why so many of you are involved in philanthropic causes uh, and have been for many decades. Philanthropy can help change the incentives so we can get as much research on malaria as we get on baldness, but foundations and private donors are only part of the answer. The final piece of the puzzle, and a critical one, is research institutions like Hebrew University. 
They do the basic research that leads to innovations that in turn make huge differences in people's lives. That is why Albert Einstein traveled around the world raising money for Hebrew University in the 1920s. And it's why we're here tonight, supporting the Robert H. Smith Faculty of Agriculture. Hebrew University is uniquely suited to contribute to the world in this way. The challenge, Israeli farmers have always faced arid soils and an acute water shortage are the same challenge that hundreds of millions of farmers will face in the future, especially as climate change and population growth become more pronounced. In many ways, Israeli, Israel has served as an agricultural laboratory for the world, and Hebrew University has taken the responsibility seriously. Outreach has always been central to its mission. Albert Einstein would be very proud. The university he championed so long ago is doing science for mankind. Hebrew University must be able to devote more resources to cutting edge research for the developing world. If that happens, then the world will keep getting better and we will be able to look back in 50 years and say that concern for man himself was the chief objective of our technological efforts. We will be able to say that we saved hundreds of millions of lives and that scientific progress was the driving force behind the greatest social progress in history. Thank you.